Hi, I'm Norm Haley with the Alabama Cooperative Extension System, and welcome to part two of our Cougar video series. In this part, we're going to talk about some other physical evidence that we can use to actually confirm the presence of cougars or mountain lions within the state of Alabama, that being kill sites, scrapes, and also tracks. And kill sites are another way that we can confirm the presence of cougars in the state of Alabama. Cougars, bobcats, and bears all make use of kill sites for their larger prey items. However, there are very distinct ways that we can tell a cougar kill site opposed to those other two species, like the, in the photos that we see right here. For large prey items, cougars, bobcats, and bears will consume a portion and then cache the rest of the carcass. However, bear and bobcat often leave the carcass very near the kill site, whereas cougars will often drag the carcass to a new location. So look for signs of dragging like smoothed out sandy areas, um, rustled up leaves, pine straw, things along those lines. Generally, cougars will drag their kills to a fence or under trees or fallen logs and then cover it extensively with grass, brush, and leaves. They'll return later to feed again, sometimes moving the kill to another location and then repeating this process until the majority of that kill has been consumed. However, know that even with a lack of vegetation, such as in a meadow or a pasture, cougars will attempt to cache a kill just like you see here with this cougar killed foal that's just lightly covered in some grass clippings or this calf that was found in a pasture. Now these meager attempts to cache may resemble a bear or a bobcat, but we can further examine the kills for indications that it was indeed killed by a cougar. Such as claw marks around the head and neck area and also puncture wounds actually at the neck. Also, check for punctures at the base of the skull. One and a half to two inches wide generally indicates the bite of a cougar. Bites of dogs, coyotes, and bobcats will be much narrower. Also, look for clumps of hair or fur that's been pulled or plucked off of the carcass. Another distinction of a cougar kill is entry into the body cavity just behind the rib cage. Cougars then eviscerate or gut the animal and then consume the liver, lungs, and heart, but they rarely consume the entrails. However, just because the entrails might be absent from a kill site doesn't mean that they haven't been consumed by other scavengers. Here's an example of an eviscerated deer that's been covered in a light leaf layer. And here's another example of a white-tailed deer that's been eviscerated and almost fully consumed. Now if the kill that you have found matches some of these characteristics, don't forget that it's possible to set up a trail camera over the kill site or the carcass in order to try to get an actual photo of the cougar that's made that kill. Of course, having photographic evidence puts us that much closer to confirming cougars in Alabama for the first time in more than 60 years. Now, if you think you found a cougar kill site, there's some very important things to consider. Number one is after two to three days of that kill, it becomes very hard to tell what made that kill just because of decomposition, especially here in the warmer temperatures in the southeast and state of Alabama. Also, be sure to take a lot of pictures, document that kill as best you can, and also call the, your extension agent or a wildlife biologist to have them come in and document the kill site for themselves. I'm Spencer Bradley with the Alabama Cooperative Extension System. Another sign to look out for when you think you might have mountain lions on the property are scrapes. Scrapes are just a, a territorial behavior that all felines exhibit where they take their paws and they just scra scrape across the litter on top of the ground. It's just like what a house cat would do in a litter box. Now the main difference between a mountain lion and a bobcat is going to be the size of the scrape. Both in the width, a mountain lion is going to have much larger paws and in the length. A mountain li lion has longer legs so they have just more room to scrape to scrape back that litter. A bobcat is gonna be much smaller, something like this, where a mountain lion, on the other hand, is gonna be much larger, wider, and longer. Another piece of evidence to look out for is tracks. Uh, look for mountain lion or cougar tracks in either very wet or very dry areas along muddy creek banks or ponds or along dry or sandy roads. This is a really good spot here. We got several intersections where we're near some water behind us and we're, we're next to a couple ag fields as well. Here are uh, three different types of tracks that we're going to compare. Here on your left we have an adult mountain lion track both front and rear. We have a coyote, a bobcat, and a black bear. Now the coyote and the bobcat and the black bear are often mistaken for mountain lion tracks, but when you look closer, they're really not very similar. The mountain lion is going to be relatively large. It has a pad with three lobes, 
and it has four toes. You'll notice that there are no claw marks. Cats have retractable claws, and so they're not gonna be out when they're just walking around. Now compare this to a bobcat, and they're just very, very small. Uh, so there's really no mistaking a mountain lion for a bobcat track. Compared to the coyote, uh, it does have four toes, but it's gonna be longer, not as square, and it also has the, uh, the claw marks here, which the mountain lion and the bobcat will not have. Now, a large domestic dog will be similar size or even larger than these tracks, but the domestic dog is gonna have the claw marks. And on your right here, we have a black bear print. Um, and uh, they're gonna be a lot wider than a mountain lion, and they also usually show five toes. Uh, so they're, they're the similar size, depending on the size of the bear, even larger, but they're a lot wider and not as square as a mountain lion. Let's say you come across a track that you think is a mountain lion. It's roughly square, three inches by three inches, and there's no claw marks. The first thing that we suggest you do is take your cell phone, snap a picture or two or three of this, and send it to your local extension agent, or a federal or state wildlife biologist. Then we suggest tracing the track. We really like these clear plastic plates because they have a lip on them and you can put them over the track without disturbing the track. Tracing this track takes some evidence that the track was there and it also gives the relative side in case of a weather event, rain or wind that washes this track away. So all we're gonna do, take our Sharpie, do a rough, sketch of this track and we'll have that as evidence and we can use this with the with our cell phone pictures as proof of these possible mountain lion tracks this concludes part two of our mountain lion series. For more information and more techniques for proving that you have mountain lions on your property, check out parts one and three. If you do think you have hard evidence of a mountain lion sighting, be sure to contact Extension, Alabama Extension, or your state and federal biologists. Now to contact your local county office, look us up in the phone book under Alabama Cooperative Extension or get online to www.aces.edu forward slash directory. From there you'll find the interactive state map. Click on your county and then scroll down the staff to find the forestry, wildlife, and natural resources agent that serves your area. Then click on their name or picture and you'll find their office number, their mobile number, and also their email. Feel free to give us a call and we'll be glad to help you document whatever evidence you may find.